So we showed you a kernel function. Now this kernel function cannot be uh, executed just by itself on the FPGA or GPUs in the OpenCL programming framework. There's still something else we need to do in order for us to instantiate kernels and to run these kernels on parallel computing units. Uh, we will have to set up the environment for computation. This environment is really uh, platform dependent. Uh, this is where we're going to understand the available resources in the platform uh, and we're going to have to uh, understand the important uh, parameters in this platform, for example, the number of compute units, uh, the memory size, etc. Following that, we need to prepare for the uh, kernel to work. And for that, we need to create context. And also, within the context, we need to create command Q. And we'll talk more about that. Essentially, this context and command Q are abstractions of this uh, kernel um, of these resources available on OpenCL and with this context and command Q we can manipulate the data uh, for inputs and outputs also more importantly we can use the context and command Q to instantiate kernels once we get that ready we have to uh, prepare input data uh, this involves allocation of buffers on the host side and then copy the uh, data from the host memory to the device memory to get it ready for the kernel computation. Once the uh, data buffer is ready, then we'll dispatch the kernel. And at that time, you need to define the uh, number of uh, kernels you want to instantiate, how many dimensions you want to use, and also um, initialize the arguments that are needed for uh, executing the kernel. Once the kernel is completed, we need to collect results. And to do that, we will read uh, the device memory to obtain the final results. This slide shows the basic programming steps for building an OpenCL application. The OpenCL application has basically two uh, layers, platform layer and runtime layer. During the platform layer, the program has to query the OpenCL platform. It is important to know the available devices in this platform. And also, in some cases, we have to know the parameters on this device so that we can understand the resources better. After that, we need to create an OpenCL context. And a very important step is to create a command queue, which will be used later for buffer operations kernel launches, etc. So this command queue is essential. So this command queue is a very important element that will be used throughout the OpenCL application. Then we need to create buffers. Buffers are important elements for us to use for exchanging data between the host and the device. With buffers, we can copy the initial data from the host memory to the device memory for the device to compute on. And after the computation is done on the device, and we'll use buffers to copy the results back to the host. Next step is to compile program. Uh, here, we are really referring to the kernel program. We see that we can have a kernel function stored in the .cl file. And then we need to compile the kernel into a binary that can be executed on the accelerator device, either FPGA or GPU. So the compilation is really uh, device specific. If we are running the OpenCL kernel on a GPU, then the compilation will be performed by the GPU compiler. If we are running uh, an OpenCL application, on an FPGA device, then the kernel will be compiled by the FPGA's OpenCL development kit. So it's uh, often time we have some differences in terms of kernel compilation at this step. And also the main difference between the GPU compilation and uh, the FPGA uh, compilation is the time. 
uh, we know that uh, GPU uh, compilation can be very quick and whereas the uh, compilation for a FPGA binary could take hours. So that is why we have to deal with this kernel compilation differently for GPU devices and FPGA devices. And also we'll show you uh, in the next example uh, how we are um, doing this differently for different devices. After the kernel is compiled, and we can then uh, instantiate the kernel. And to do that, we need to set proper arguments. We need to pass the values of these arguments to the kernel function before we actually uh, run the kernels. Once the arguments are passed into the kernel, and then we can start executing the kernel. Eventually, when the kernel is completed, we can then copy the results back from the device to the host memory. So let's begin with the first step, setup environment. Here we'll look at how we query the platform and device, and how do we declare a context, and how do we create uh, command queues. The first line of code is to get platform ID. Um, at this time, you notice that all the OpenCL functions, they start with CL, uh, lowercase, then, uh, then the operation name after that. So this first statement is to get the platform IDs. Now the parameter we pass into this uh, statement is that one means uh, how many uh, platform descriptors we'll be able to get, and but we don't pass in a platform uh, ID array uh, to store the information, which is fine. But the most important thing is we're going to use this platform count to uh, record the number of uh, platforms uh, available in the system. Uh, assuming platform count is uh, declared as a variable, integer variable ahead of time. So we pass in this uh, uh, reference of the variable, and the this CL get platforms ID will report the number of platforms into this variable. And then we use that variable uh, to uh, allocate the platforms uh, variable. And this is actually an array of uh, platform descriptors that we can use uh, following uh, later. Now we have this uh, number of platforms, and now we can also have uh, platforms, which is an array of uh, platform descriptors. Now at this time, we'll use uh, those numbers to actually get the platform information. So these first three lines seems a little bit odd. Uh, what we are actually doing is in the first line, we're going to uh, get the number of platforms. And then the second line is to allocate a space to store the platform IDs. And the third line is actually get the platform IDs uh, from this get platform ID call. Now assuming in the later um, implementation we only use platform zero, so even if there are, even if there could be more platforms, we only use the first platform. Then we pass this platform zero into this uh, uh, another OpenCL API, CL get device IDs. At this stage, we can choose the uh, available devices within this platform. You can choose the default device. You can also choose specific devices, such as CPU or GPU. And then you will uh, use this device ID and return number of devices to record the uh, descriptors of the devices returned. And then you can use this get device info uh, API to get uh, more detailed information regarding the chosen device. So you can uh, select the uh, device name uh, as the information to report, and then you can print that out. At this time, you can uh, rest sure that you have access to the platform, and you can uh, you are able to find a OpenCL device that's available for use. 
Now we're going to go to the next uh, uh, step here to create OpenCL context. As we mentioned earlier, context is a very important uh, object in OpenCL framework. And context is an enclosure of all the uh, resources, command queues, buffers, uh, all tied into this context. As example here, we're going to create a command queue within this context. And also, we say that uh, this command queue is for uh, this device, where this device ID is the identifier of the chosen device. And it has a return value, and you can check the return value uh, for you know, success or fail. And it's highly recommended that you do that in order to make sure every API call succeeds. The next major step is to declare buffers and try to move data. Now, we're doing this matrix multiplication. Uh, remember, we have A, B, and C. A and B are input matrices, and C is an output matrix. And because the way we store these data in the uh, physical memory, which has a linear address space, so we actually store them in a float type arrays. Uh, and we assume that A, B, C are all these flow type arrays that have been declared uh, ahead of time. So at this point, we can use OpenCL functions uh, APIs to create buffers. The first example here is we create buffer A, uh, where we use the CL create buffer. Uh, as you can see, we use this context again because uh, this buffer and any uh, other buffers we use in this example are within this context. The type of this buffer A is read-only. And the size is uh, this width of A times height of A uh, times the size of float. And then uh, we have another parameter uh, for passing in the um, host buffers, which we don't need, and the return value. Now note that in this case, because buffer A is an uh, input uh, matrix, so uh, for the device, uh, it only has to read data from this buffer A. That's why we say this is CL mem read only. And also you can have uh, another buffer uh, with a type uh, write only or even read and write. After buffer A is created, uh, we'll then copy the data, uh, which is the initial matrix A, to this buffer. And note that this buffer A is actually a buffer on the device. So the way we copy data is to use CL in queue write buffer. And uh, we will use this command queue, which was created earlier. And we're going to uh, put the uh, target uh, buffer, which is the buffer A, where we run, want to write data to. CL true is for synchronization purpose. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, you can just leave it here. And uh, this is another parameter. We uh, typically leave it as a zero. Uh, and then we use the uh, size of the array uh, and types times the uh, size of the data. And uh, then we will uh, pass in the uh, host buffer pointer. So this A is the um, buffer memory on the host side, which contains the initial data. And we have uh, 0 now, now as the default uh, arguments going to be passed in. So at this point, you have a buffer A that is allocated on the device side. Also, we're trying to uh, write initial data to this buffer A by using this CL in queue write buffer. Similarly, we'll do the buffer allocation for matrix B, which is also on the device. Uh, as you can see here, buffer B is uh, created using CL create buffer, and the type is memory read only, uh, same as the buffer A, and also the size of uh, matrix B. And then we're going to do another buffer write operation to copy the initial value of uh, matrix B into this buffer B, which resides on the device side.
Now, this next step is to allocate space for matrix C. Remember, matrix C is the output matrix. So from the point of the device, uh, this matrix C has to be uh, written. Uh, we're going to put the uh, calculation results into this matrix C. That's why when we create this buffer C, we declare it as a CL memory write-only because the device, the FPGA or GPU, only has to write the results to this buffer C. Even though we declare this buffer C as a CL memory write-only, it does not prevent us from reading this buffer from the host side. And that's what we have to do because eventually the host has to retrieve the results from this device and copy the, the uh, resulting uh, matrix from buffer C to somewhere in the host. Now I just want to show you the uh, full definition of this API, CL create buffer. It takes five arguments for this API. Context is the uh, context we created for this OpenCL program. There are certain flags you can pass in which indicates the types of this buffer. It could be read-write, so you can both read and write, or it could be write-only or read-only. And there's some other uh, types you can use as well. The third argument is the size of, of the buffer, and the fourth argument is the host pointer, which uh, has the um, a corresponding memory location on the host side for uh, read and write operations. And uh, the last uh, argument is actually the return value. 